Good morning. I'm Melissa Chartrand, joined with artist Ellen Scott, who's also not only artist. We were trying to figure out how to do your titles, Ellen, because you're involved in a lot of things here. Uh, you're president of the Cape Cod Artists and Guild. Yes. Artists and Guild of Cape, Cape Cod. Cod. I said that backwards. Right. And the Society for the Cape Craftsmen. So we have a lot to talk about. Yes. Let's first talk about, we're talking off camera that we discovered we're both uh, graduated from the same high school in New Jersey. We both had moved for transplants, transplants there in uh, Basking Ridge, New Jersey, but what a small world. I know, that's really funny. And you were saying that that's where you learned um, all about blowing glass? No, not blowing not glass. Not blowing glass. I did stained glass. Stained glass. And I went to uh, the adult education at Wachung Regional High School. and. Um, and it was funny, a friend signed me up for it, and I, she said, let's take an art class. And I was like, oh, yeah, and I thought we would be doing, like, watercolors <laughs> or, you know. She was already oil painted, but I figured something, something like... Something visual. Well, yeah. With a brush. Yeah. And she comes back, and she says, we're going to take stained glass. And I was like, oh, my God, <laughs> who would want to take stained glass? And here I am. All these years later, yeah. and we were just talking about, let's talk a little bit about what you're wearing and what you have and, that, and how your work's evolved. Well, now I'm into jewelry. I do um, what's called chain mail. The earrings are chain mail, and then the bracelet. I know this, I just love. Here we can tell. Whole different look. And you were saying that that's a, a, it relaxes you. It doesn't right. look to me, it looks a little intense and knitting and winding together, They're but t tell me about this process. What it is, is it's made with jump rings. They're sterling silver, and you open and close each one, and it's what they call weaving. So you're linking them all together, and I just find it to just sit, and what I like about it is you can leave it, too. Sure. And then, you know, just put it in a plastic bag and go back to it when you have time. I also work with um, metal clay. And I teach that at the Creative Arts Center in Chatham also. And what is, I don't think I've ever it's, heard of metal clay. It's taking silver findings, mixing them with a binder and water, and you form it just like you would clay. And when you fire it in a kiln, the binder and the water burns off, and you're left with fine silver. Wow. And they also make a bronze clay, copper clay. I work right now mostly with the silver clay. And what types of uh, pieces do you create? With well, that? you can make pendants and you know, and earrings, and you can actually sculpt with it. I'm not very talented as a sculptor, so I don't do that. But people, I've seen people make like chrysanthemums and little figures. It also comes in a paper form, so if you do origami, you can make silver origami. Oh, how spectacular you is know, that? So it's really, it's a, a phenomenal thing to work with. Sure. It's fascinating to me that where, as you say, you took an art class with unsuspecting and look at where it's brought to, brought you. Right. Um, and do you still find that you're doing that as an artist, that you're I'm finding new mediums? And yeah, uh, because I, as I said, I started with stained glass and I sure. did that for, I hate to admit, it had to have been like 30 years. And then I started hearing about kiln formed glass which is a little different from blown glass, but it's still, it's working with heat and glass. And I was like, oh, that seems interesting. And I was still working. And I took a class and I told, said to my husband, I, am, I, refu I won't buy a kiln. Mm -hmm. I won't. I'll just, I just want to see what this is all about. Well, boy, did I lie, because yeah. the next day I bought a kiln, <laughs> a kiln and, and that's it. that was a whole new. I now have three kilns. I have one that's um, like 48 by um, 25 by 13 inches deep, so I do big work now. Uh, I still do stained glass. I still haven't given that up. That's still, you know, that's like my... Your roots. Yeah, the roots, and you just can't get away from them. But I'm doing bigger and bigger things with that also. Right. Now, do you do big commission pieces, or if our viewers were interested in your work, so obviously you sell the jewelry, but some of these other pieces and these large-scale pieces, where, where well, do actually, you sell your work? Well, um, actually, I do craft shows. I'm kind of backing off. Um, as you get older, it's harder and harder to do it. But I am in two galleries on the Cape. Um, one is in Sandwich. It's Collections Gallery. And they have all glass there, okay. strictly. Um, in Orleans, I'm in Coastal Craft Gallery, and they have both my jewelry and both the stained glass and the kiln form glass. Interesting. I, I look forward to seeing your work and the progressions and the similarities and the differences between, between the work, because I'm sure you take elements from each. Yes, you do. And I've actually, with some of the jewelry, I've incorporated the metal clay into glass jewelry. So there is that overlap sure. of, uh, of doing stuff like that and just doing different things. and. 
And how are you inspired? Do you do you look around you and start to assemble in your mind? Some or? of it is, and it's funny. I got an idea for doing um, a kiln piece from going to a concert. Really? And it was the um, Trans Siberian Orchestra. I went to their Christmas show at the Garden, and they had this huge chandelier in the middle of the stage, and it could be molded. It was like on fiber optics, so it would come down. And I was like, oh, I could do something like wow. that with glass. And I haven't done it yet, but it's, so it's weird where you get Where the you get that inspiration from. from. Well, let's now talk about, so speaking of overlapping, your work as a president overlaps with some of these other organizations you're involved. So let's briefly talk about the two different organizations and what they're about. Okay, well, the Artisans Guild is now going into its 52nd year. Um, I became a member probably 10 years ago and did it because they were known on the Cape for having a quality show. And that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to be able to exhibit my work. I was a member for like a year and they talked me into being recording <laughs> secretary and from then I have held office, you know, for the rest of my life with the, with the Guild. And some of the people laugh and say that I'm just going to be president for life. You um, may just be. You know, and, uh, but what I like about the Guild is that we mentor other people. We collaborate with each other. Um, if you see somebody that's doing a particular piece, you might say, ooh, could you do this with that? Or, you know, oh, if you did that, then I could do this to it. So we talk about each other's work, um, which is very inspiring sure. also and helpful and... Um, those connections, those collaborations, connections, and then not only work-wise, but those deeper friendship bonds, I yeah. think, last a lifetime. And, and that's it. I've made some great friends with people, and, uh, we, and we have fun. We trade pieces rather than, really you know, it's buy. like... That's nice to do. You know, like, ooh, I really like that. And it, well, I like that of yours. So, you know, you want to barter, you know, you want to trade, right. and we do that. And right, and I'm sure inspire each other. I'm sure critique, um, constructive criticism, criticism and critique to take work to new levels. Right, you know, like, I like that, but, you know, if you did this with it, or right. could you do that with it? So it's nice to have that group of artists. And then also with the Guild, uh, and we will put up the website, it's artisansguildcapecod.org where all this information is available on how to become a member, member and the different things the organization does. What is the visiting artist about? The visiting artist is, in the beginning, all the shows were only members. And we decided that we wanted to have a little more visibility. And because to be a member, you have to reside on the Cape. So this way, it opened it up to people who lived off Cape but still wanted to do the shows. So we started the visiting artist program for that. And they're juried and we use the criteria sure. that we use for members. So, you know, we can maintain the quality of the show. Right, and it's nice to have that, um, I always say the arts know no town lines. So that although we are very proud and supportive and want to um, have our arts here on the Cape, right. it is nice to bring in artists from elsewhere for them to experience all the beauty that it is we here, have here on as the Cape. well and share so that. So that's what the Visiting Artist Program is Great. all about. And then how about the um, your other organization that you're president of as well? The Society of Cape Cod Craftsmen. And that, what's that about? That is basically the same um, the time frame, and I should have looked it up and I didn't, is about the same. They've been in existence, I think, a little longer than the Guild. Um, and I should also say the Guild started as a social group. It was just some that artists sense, getting together, um, just talking amongst themselves. The society um, does not have, um, I'm going to call it flat art for lack of it, you know, like paintings, photography, that One, type three, of two and three D. It's um, strictly crafts work. Um, so we have potters and glass people and jewelers. Fiber arts. And, yeah, that kind, that's, of thing. that kind of thing. And they do one show a year in Brewster where the Guild does more. Um, and they do it under a big tent. But the, the thought process behind them is still the same. It's still the mentoring, the friendships, the um, camaraderie. Very similar in that aspect. Great. Uh, same thing with membership, and uh, they strictly, the show there um, right now is strictly members only. 
they haven't expanded yet to right. outside. I, I see that coming in the, yeah. in the future. Do you it's see we're that's we're the... looking into it right now, trying to come up with a program, but nothing has been um, like set down yet. We're having a board meeting in next week, and we'll start discussing it more. Right. We had um, a committee set up to start looking into it and how we're going to go about it. So, do you find that people look at the crafts differently? I think sometimes people, you know, handmade uh, objects and and of this type of work. I don't know if it's on the same. People think of it as the same level, and yet these are beautiful, well done, handcrafted. I mean, just a, a superior quality. Well, so many people I think have gotten into the flea market mentality, and they come to a lot. Of of the shows where you do have the better crafts, the fine arts, right. and they think it's the same thing. So they want to barter with you over price and they don't realize. And yet, I think we have found that once you establish that customer base, they really do keep coming back because they know they're getting quality, quality merchandise. Right. And that it's handmade, they're not going to see 50 of them every place they go. Um, and an appreciation for the process and the time and what's yeah. been put into that piece of it, work. Exactly. Is, so, so which, is, which is great about doing shows because you get to talk about your work to people. And, um, and again, those connections uh, with our, sh we were talking about the shanty program down at Hyannis Harbor, right. is that that's really a big part of the process for both the person buying the work and for the artists themselves. There is just this magical connection, connection. and what each takes from it um, really is profound. Let's just quickly review the websites. So you said you are on Facebook. I'm on Facebook. And how can our viewers find you on Facebook? I'm on Facebook under Ellen Scott. And um, I'm also on Facebook under Scarlet Fire Designs, which is the name of my business. And that has pictures mostly of my glasswork. I don't have, um, I don't think I have any jewelry on there yet. I'm trying to do more, but it's tough. It's tough to be creating the work and, and having the time to, to, to right? photograph it. Sure. Although you said your husband's a photographer, so well, there's that's no why, excuse here, Alan, right? But that's why I have no photographs. <laughs> right. <laughs> because you know how they say the shoemaker's sure. children don't have shoes? Well, the photographer's wife can't get okay, photos. Can't get pictures of anything. Well, we'll have to work on that. Right. All right. That's the, in the plan for the future. Sounds great. Well, thank you so much for your time today. Oh, Ellen. you're we welcome. really enjoyed chatting with you and learning about your work and the Artisan Guild. And um, I wish you all the best. You said you're doing a lot of traveling. So I will look forward to in the fall, maybe we should meet again and okay. see what those travel influences have done for your work. Okay, great. We'll love to. Great. Well, for Ellen Scott, I'm Melissa Chartrand, wishing you an artful day.